there we go. It's part five, uh, page 262, and we're still on joints. And in this case, we're looking at specific joints of interest. So um, possibly the single most commonly considered joint in clinical uh, work would be the knee. Okay, there's a lot of people with knee issues. Um, it's not a big surprise that we're bearing most of the weight of our body above the knee and that um, the, um, the tibia and the foot become planted and then uh, sometimes we're, how shall I say, put upon at this joint. And so it has really no place to go when it's put upon. Okay, so um, there's a variety of things that put upon. Uh, one would be um, contact sports. So if somebody hits you from an angle in which the knee does not have its normal function, there are serious consequences from that. Also, um, in car and bike accidents, uh, there's a possibility of trouble. And then, of course, there's people who play sports on um, artificial surfaces and the cleats of the shoes you're wearing get caught in the fabric and the fabric is uh, ungiving compared to grass and soil and so again the knee gets um, in some way twisted or impacted in a traumatic way. So before we get to trauma though let's look at what's the norm. What is the homeostatic norm of this situation and we're looking from the side here. It's described that uh, this is a sagittal section through a right knee. Okay. And so let's look at, look closely. You'll notice that the uh, patella is gliding up here at the, um, sur the patellar surface of the femur on the front. Look at the extent here of synovial fluid and space that is um, afforded the knee. It's a very large joint. Okay, also here's a nice little bursa right here. There's another one out here. Uh, for people who spend a lot of time uh, in wrestling or possibly in hardwood floor um, assembly, um, these bursas are quite put upon. Uh, because in either of those activities, you're bringing the mass of the body down on the knee. It's a little bit hazardous. Okay, another thing to notice from this angle are these um, cruciate ligaments. So I need to uh, think through that with you. There's two of them. And uh, do you see that there's one right here traveling backwards this way? That's the posterior, and there's one right here traveling in an anterior direction. And the idea here is that the anterior cruciate cannot, it prevents me from pulling the knee forward too far. Right? So one of the things you learn about in dance, gymnastics, tai chi, is that you shouldn't bend your knee too far forward, especially not past uh, when you look straight down past the toe of your foot because then you're really stressing out this anterior cruciate. And the idea here is you don't want the bone to move forward underneath the femur. Okay, so this anterior cruciate prevents that. And then another uh, scenario, this posterior cruciate keeps the, uh, the tibia from moving back this way, prevents that. In the old days, um, possibly before you were born, there was a time uh, here in the, uh, in the country, uh, the United States, when we had no seat belts. And um, the passenger seat was defined as um, the, um, the death seat. Um, in some cases, people didn't die. But they did hit the dashboard from a seated position. So you have to imagine that the person's uh, seated and their femur is down this way, right? And they have projected themselves forward very quickly because the car had to stop suddenly when it hit the tree or whatever was the immovable object. 
and as a result the tibia right here gets hit and it gets pushed back this way. So you can imagine that in those days of yore, um, a posterior cruciate ligament tear was part of the possibility. That doesn't happen so much anymore because we're required to wear seat belts, so we tend not to run into things unless, of course, we're on a motorcycle, then almost anything can happen. Okay, so um, those are the cruciate ligaments. Um, you'll notice also that part of the program here is that we have big muscle here, we have the, um, the patella, we have this patellar ligament coming down this way. Okay, so that's the, how things are defined from that view. As we come and look from above, um, here again we see, looking down on the right tibia, we see that there's a space here for the left uh, condyle and for the right condyle of the femur to rest. And it's even gotten built up a little bit here with fibrocartilage. Okay, so this this extra build up here is referred to as a meniscus. In this case, the medial meniscus, because this is the right side. This is the lateral meniscus. Uh, you can see that the uh, anterior cruciate ligament is coming from and attaching to uh, the uh, femur, and it's coming down this way, right? So you can't pull that tibia out that way. We have a posterior cruciate that goes this way, and you can't push the uh, the tibia back behind. So that's the deal right there. Now, something to come into um, close understanding is that this is, the artist hasn't done justice here. One of the things that I did with uh, teaching anatomy in medical school was that on occasion orthopedic surgeons, brand new ones, would come on through as they were uh, at the very beginning of their uh, specialization in knees and we would pull out a whole bunch of legs uh, from a um, cadaver box and we would look very carefully, even using dissection microscopes, at this part of the knee and noticing that the fibril cartilage right here, and I mean, this is the fibrocartilage, excuse me, this connective tissue. This is dense regular connective tissue with collagen bundles, but the collagen is continuous. Okay, that's an important detail, that if this is stressed, the continuous nature of the collagen bundle can actually pull on the meniscus and tear it away. So that's an important little detail, is the continuous nature of the anterior cruciate ligament and the medial epicondyle. Put that in your mind and uh, and put a little star on that. Okay, then um, here are some, uh, some views that include the muscles. Okay, like that and like that. Okay, so we're going to press on now to this view. Okay, so we just took a look at this view from above. Here we have the view from, um, it's the anterior view, it says right here, anterior view of a flexed knee. Okay, and in this case it's a right flexed knee. We have actually cut the tendon right here, and so we've pulled down the, um, the patella. And we're looking straight into the knee now, just the way you like it. And um, you can see uh, it's bent a little bit, so that means this little condyle here and this little condyle is leaning back, uh, but they would have been, if they were standing up straight, they would have been right inside here, inside the uh, the articular space and the uh, meniscus. Okay, and then notice that there's something else going on here. There's a collateral ligament on both sides. Over here, it doesn't actually associate too closely with the joint. It goes down to the fibula, but on the medial side, it associates very closely, and the same thing that I was talking about before, wherein the collagen bundles of the uh, meniscus, the medial meniscus, is also associated with the collagen bundles over here of this unit, which is the uh, medial collateral, sometimes referred to as um, the tibial collateral ligament. Here they're actually identifying it, the name, 
and they're they're pointing to just a little tiny edge of it up here but this whole thing is the tibial okay and I'm going to present one two three things here as the unhappy triad okay because these are the three things that break but uh, I'm going to go on to this next part here to explain that